everyone, it's Molly here again with Boo Boo, Mr. Gallop! Yay! Um, so you guys always request for me to show Gallop in videos, so I don't know if you guys can really see him very well or not, but he's laying here beside me with his head on my lap. He's a tired baby right now. It's the end of a long day. Um, so another guide dog related video. I know you guys always seem to love these videos and request these videos. I love doing them because I love my dog, so I'm all about it. And as you can see, it's the guide dog tag video. I just filmed this video, but I was like, Gallop's not in it! And you guys always request to see him in videos. So I was like, guess I'm refilming! So here we are. So basically this was a tag video started by Fashionista, Fashionista or Emily here on YouTube who's a good friend of mine. We've done a couple collabs in the past which I'll link down below and I'll also link my doggy vlogging playlist. So all your guide dog needs in video form all in one place. There you go. So yeah, that's, that's who started this tag and she tagged me to do it. So of course. I'm here to do it. I'll link her um, channel down below as well. In case you want to check her out and her amazing videos, watch her guide dog tag. And here we go. Oh, I have my computer here beside me, by the way. Right here. And it's going to read me the questions with voiceover. If you want to know how I use my technology, I'll link my video on how I use technology as a blind person. So number one, what is your guide dog's name? This is Gallop. Gallop like a horse running. Sometimes when I say that, people are like, your name is Gallop, like a horse running? And I'm like, no, it's just Gallop. But sometimes if I just say Gallop, if I'm somewhere loud, people are like, what, Gala? Allop? Like, they don't hear it, so I always have to relate it to something. And so most guide dog schools name their dogs by um, a litter letter. So litter A, and all the dogs start with the letter A. Litter B, all the dogs' names start with a letter B. But the way the Mirror Foundation, where I get my dogs, uh, the way how they do it is by theme. So they've had like desserts. So they'll have like pretzel and cupcake and nougat. Pretty cute. Um, Gypsy, my first guide dog, was music. So she was named after a Spanish band called Gypsy Kings. Gallop's litter theme was um, famous inventors and scientists and Nobel Prize winners. So there was Newton, there was Tico, and he was Gallop after the Gallop Pole, which is G-A-L-L-U-P, but I've switched the spelling of his name since I got him to G-A-L-L-O-P because it's less awkward saying Gallop like a horse running than it is to say Gallop like the pole. So, yeah. What is the breed of your guide dog? Gallop is half black lab. His mom was a black lab named Millie, which is kind of funny because his first mom was Millie, M-I-L-L-Y, and his second mom is Molly, M-O-L-L-Y. And his dad was a Bernese mountain dog named Chinook, so he is a Labernese. And my first guide dog, Gypsy, was three quarters Bernese mountain dog, which is, she had more, which is why she had more white on her. He has two white back paws and like a white heart or bird shape on his chest. Um, but she had a lot more white because she was three quarters Bernese, one quarter black lab. How old is your guide dog? Gallop will be turning four on May 2nd. Where was your guide dog trained? My guide dog was trained at the Mira Foundation in Quebec. On <laughs> Quebec, um, I was about to say Quebec, Ontario. Really, Molly? Quebec is a province in Canada, so Quebec, Canada. And uh, so he only knows French commands because Quebec is predominantly a French-speaking province. So yeah, he only knows French commands. I honestly prefer that he does not know English other than the English commands that I've personally taught him um, because nobody else can talk to him. They can try to get him to come over and see them, but he doesn't know what they're saying, so he doesn't do it, which is great. When did you qualify with your guide dog? I got him on August 8th of 2014. Um, Gypsy, I can't even remember when I got her, but she passed away on on May 22nd of 2014, and I got him August 8th of 2014. Is, is he your first guide dog? No! Gypsy! Um, yeah, G Gypsy worked for me for seven years, and unfortunately she passed away very suddenly and unexpectedly uh, before she had the chance to retire. So she was, she was still working, going strong for me at nine and a half when she passed away. Summarize your guide dog's personality in five words. Ooh, that's a tough one. Calm, 
I mean, he is like honestly the most calm dog I've ever met in my life. People are constantly like, is he always like this? Is he always this calm? He's honestly calming to be around. And it's not just me who says that. The amount of people are like, just being around your dog makes me feel calm. Like he just has a way of lowering people's blood pressure. Um, he's very relaxing to be around. He's super dedicated. He's just zen, um, devoted, just so loving and devoted. I mean, of course he's loyal, he's a dog, it's kind of what they're known for. But yeah, he's he's an old soul. Like, it's so funny, people will meet him and they're like, man, he's lived a few times. Like, he's had a few lives before this one. He's just, I don't know, he's just a, a little Buddha boy. My little Buddha, my little gentle giant. What is the best thing about your guide dog? Oh my gosh, he has too many best things. And like I said, he just has a way of, of calming me down and calming everybody around him down, which is, I think, a really beautiful quality. Like, he's just calming to be around. He loves to snuggle. He's so dedicated to working. He's honestly the best working dog I've ever seen, and I'm not just saying that because he's mine. I've had a past guide dog, and I'm willing to say he is even better than she was. Every O&M instructor or orientation and mobility instructor I've worked with is like, this is the best guide dog I've ever seen. Every every other guide dog user I hang out with, like my friends who are guide dog users, are often like, oh my god, your dog's amazing. Like he's just not phased by anything. He doesn't get distracted by anything. He's just like driven and focused and just does his job impeccably. I'm so lucky. What's the funniest thing your guide dog has ever done? Um, might not sound that funny, but it's it's kind of what sold me on him. So when they gave me Gallup, uh, I honestly spent like a solid half day just sobbing, bawling my eyes out. Because when after Gypsy died, I, I really struggled. I really struggled with anxiety. You'll hear about that in my anxiety journey video, which I'll be doing hopefully soon. Um, I struggled with anxiety, I was depressed, I was sobbing, I would hardly leave my house. Like I honestly, without having a guide dog, I just did not feel like myself. Because, I mean, coming up this July, I'll be a guide dog user for nine years, which is insane. Um, so guide dogs have been a huge part of my life. I'm only 22 and I've been a guide dog user for nine years, so they've been a big part of my life and I just, when I didn't have her, I just didn't feel like myself. And, and when they gave me him, um, I put my hands on him and it was the first time I was forced to touch another dog that felt like her but wasn't her. You know, he had the same soft coat as her. The, the Labernese dogs, um, they have a much softer, fluffier coat than purebred Labs. It's, it's not as coarse as Lab hair. So it's like the first time I felt a dog that felt like her but, but wasn't her and I just like broke down. I, I, honestly, I called my parents, I told them come pick me up, I don't want to get a dog. I told the guide dog school that I was leaving and I didn't want a dog because um, it was just too hard. And I've heard from many, many guide dog users who are on their fifth or sixth or seventh guide dog uh, that the second dog is always the hardest because all you've ever known is your first. And it's the first time you've ever had to make a transition from one to the to the next. And so, you know, to all my friends who are on their first guide dog, good luck with that transition. You have that to look forward to. It's not fun. But, um, so that day, he, uh, he saw me crying. He was, you know, I had was holding his leash and he, he was looking at me crying. I was sitting on this couch in the common area at the school. I'll link the, the guide dog school, the Mirror Foundation, down below. And um, he, he walked over and he sat his bum on the couch and he put his four paws on the ground and I've never seen a dog do that before. And he just looked over at me and he went, hmm made this little sad moan like I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm not gypsy and I just burst out laughing and I thought if I can laugh because of this dog when all I want to do is cry then he's worth giving a shot I need to I need to give him a chance and I'm so glad I did because he's so worth it he's not gypsy but no dog will ever be just like the next dog won't be Gallup or gypsy you know it's a part of accepting and making the choice to be a guide dog or service dog user is knowing that you're gonna have to go through those transitions it's not gonna be easy and and you'll never find your old dog again but it's a new journey with the next one and he's kind of you know gypsy went through one chapter of my life with me and he's going through the next and the next dog will go through the next chapter with me and uh it's not it's not easy but it's worth it it's 
it's definitely worth the difference that they make in your life. Has your guide dog ever gotten you into any embarrassing situations? Uh, Gallup has not. He has not, not yet at least, knock on wood. Um, please knock on wood for me, there's none around me. Uh, but Gypsy, bless her soul, she would kill me for telling this story. If she could hear me now. So she, um, we were in the airport once, because of course I travel all the time with my job, and she started whining, and I thought maybe she wants water, so I went over and I got her a bowl of water, and she wouldn't drink it, and she started kind of trying to pull, and so I was like, oh, this is weird, so I stood up and I was like, maybe she wants to go for a walk, and my friend and I started walking, and she would pull towards any window, like, to show me I need to get outside, and I was like, oh no, this dog needs to go to the bathroom, so I started taking her to the human bathroom, I don't know why, it's, I mean, I guess it felt like it would be more normal for her to poop on the ground in there, because poop happens in that room. I don't know. But before we made it there, she pooped all over the carpet, like she squatted and it was just diarrhea city, like just flowing on out there. <laughs> and it was so funny because it's like she just froze. Even after she was done, she just like wouldn't move, she wouldn't blink, she wouldn't move, she wouldn't move, would not move an inch. She just froze like a little statue there. And it was almost like, if I don't move, Nobody will notice. And then the people sitting in the chairs near her looked over and started laughing and pointing at her. And she looked at them and she was like, oh no, they noticed. And she started trying to run away, like run from her poop. Like it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it didn't happen. And it was just so funny. You could just see in her, in her face, like everybody was telling me that her facial expression was just like so shameful and so embarrassed. And uh, this, the staff at the airport was so nice about it. They were just like, don't worry about it. It happens all the time. And I was like, I can clean it. And they're like, no, no, it's not. Like, don't worry about it. So it was, it was super nice of them. But poor girl, she had a stomach bug. It wasn't her fault. What is your guide dog like on harness? Honestly, for most guide dogs, uh, including my first guide dog, Gypsy, I kind of refer to the harness as like their on-off switch. Harness on, they're working. Harness off, they're playing. They're like a regular dog. But Gallop is pretty much the same on or off. He's just like a solid, steady, calm, calm guy. Like he's just solid. He doesn't really, he doesn't really change much. The only thing, you know, of course he has like his excited playful moments, which are always off harness, not on harness. But other than that, like he's, he's very similar. What are some of your guide dog's quirks? Of course, sitting on the couch like a human when he puts his bum on the couch and his paws on the floor. He loves to watch TV or movies if there's a dog in it. So if I like have my laptop on my lap and I'm watching something online and there's a dog, he will force me to turn the computer screen so he can watch it. Yeah, he gets really upset if I don't do that. And then like he'll calm down after I've given him the chance to watch it too. Um, he loves to run in, in, in and out of people's legs like a horse. <laughs> he loves in and out, in and out, in and out. And he'll also, because I'm really short, I'm only four foot ten and a half, and he's a big boy, half Bernie's mountain dog. He's a hundred pounds, literally weighs more than I do. So he'll run in between my legs and then push his bum up in the air so I get stuck on his back and can't get off, and he'll start running around with me stuck on his back, and he thinks it's hilarious. I've had multiple occasions where he has ripped my pants because of it, or he has made me fall because of it. Luckily, those have always been at home. Um, he He's such a sniffer, like, oh, I'm getting sore legs with you. Um, he will literally, like, if he's not on harness, because on harness they're not allowed to sniff things, so when he's off harness he takes all the opportunity he can to sniff, 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 sniff. And so when I take him for a walk or my family and I are going for a walk with the dogs, my family petting him off, if he's off harness, it's a sniff, not a walk. Like it'll take 20 minutes to get around one block because he's just sniff, 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 sniff. Yeah, I have to take him for sniffs, not walks. So if I want to actually give him exercise, I have to take him on a walk on harness. Where does your guide dog seem to work the best? Honestly, there's nowhere he does not work well. And I know I sound like I'm being like, oh, my dog's the best, but I'm, I honestly like, I would not be afraid to say if he had flaws. You know, Gypsy had them. Most most guide dogs do because at the end of the day, yes, they're highly trained, but they're still just dogs. But he's just like, he's weirdly perfect. Like, he doesn't have any distractions. Like I said, he's not dog distracted. He couldn't care less about seeing other dogs, food on the ground, birds, anything. It just no nothing phases him. He'll get on an escalator, no problem. Gypsy hated escalators. Like she was really bad at doing escalators. Whereas he will just walk on stand there, not phase, walk off, like he's perfect. He's really great in busy, busy environments like airports, which I'm in a lot with him, so that's good. 
He's really great um, on stage in front of screaming people, thousands of people. He'll just be like, oh cool, we're on the stage again. I'll take a nap while mom talks for the next hour. He's just He's just great. And that's really why they gave him to me because obviously, you know, the school, the Mira Foundation knew my job and my lifestyle and my needs and they, they nailed it. They gave him uh, to me because they were like, this dog won't be phased by anything you do in life and they were right. What's your guide dog's favorite thing to do off harness? Run in and out between my legs or anybody else's legs for that matter. Snuggle. He loves to snuggle and nap and play with frisbees. He doesn't like balls, but frisbees, he's all about it. Oh, and sniff, of course. He loves to sniff. And I think the last question is, has your guide dog ever gone beyond the call of duty? Um, and luckily, fortunately for me, he's never had to. I've never been in a, in a really dangerous situation where he's had to like save my life. I know I've had a, you know, friends and stuff with guide dogs who their dogs have to like pull them out of the way of a car and stuff, stuff like that, but Luckily for me, I have never been in the situation where I've needed that to happen, although I have full faith in him that he would if that situation arose in my life. And, uh, and same with Gypsy, she never had to... Although at the guide dog school when we were training, they, um, they did like a training thing where they had somebody drive a car really fast at us and Gypsy had to like pull me out of the way, it was so cool, and she did, she was bomb at that, but she nailed that! But yeah, he's never been in a situation where he had to. So yeah, those are all the questions I believe. Yeah, all the questions. So I'm gonna tag three YouTubers who also are blind or low vision and have guide dogs. Uh, J-Dog and Asian, Chatty Shelby, and Yesterday's Wishes. I've done it, um, a guide dog collab video with Yesterday's Wishes already and we have more collabs coming so definitely go check out her channel. Uh, Chatty Shelby is the one who created the visually impaired people tag that I did. Definitely go check her out. And J-Dog and Asian, I just started meeting, I mean like, Twitter, Twitter meeting, like we met on Twitter and YouTube, and we've been chatting back and forth. She's super cool. I'm gonna get to meet her um, at VidCon because I'm on a VidCon panel. Yay! I forgot to mention that I'm at a, I'm going to VidCon out in California in June to be on the Disabilities on YouTube panel and speak about my experience. So definitely go buy VidCon tickets if you want to go and you want to meet me and you want to hang out because I know they're selling out fast. So that's gonna be super exciting and I'm gonna get to meet her there. So. Yay, I tag her, and that's it. If you, if I didn't tag you, if Emily didn't tag you, but you have a guide dog and you have either a blog or a YouTube channel, feel free to do this and tweet it to me, and I'm sure tweet it to her. I'm sure she'd love to see it. That's all for today. Say goodbye, guide dog, sleepy boy. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. All right, love you. See you in my next video.